Top Boy returned for its second, fourth season a couple of months back to much fanfare. The show, which got a revamp a couple of years back, focuses on the lives and problems of the youth of Hackney and the violence that comes with it, and it is also known to have a few subtle metaphors. Today we are discussing the hidden messages you missed while watching Top Boy, so don't go anywhere. First up, let's have a quick recap of how the fourth installment ended. As you will know if you've seen the second season of Top Boy, Jamie is killed by Sully after going to answer the door. Of course, Sully is waiting for him and puts two in his chest. Jamie's younger brother then cradles his dead brother after Sully puts one in his head, which some have suggested will be the basis of the next season. Duchesne had revealed to Sully that he planned on installing Jamie as his successor, but Sully clearly had other plans. The presence of Jamie has meant friction between Duchesne and Sully for a long time, and it is likely that Sully did not agree with Duchesne's plans of installing him as the top boy of Summer House. Elsewhere, we all also found out that residents are faced with the very real possibility of being evicted from their homes thanks to redevelopment plans. But Duchesne, who was initially eager to see the place revamped so he could launder his drug money, quickly changes his tune after his mother dies as she was a strong opponent of the plans. Duchesne goes on to blackmail Lizzie's husband, ultimately meaning the investors pull the plug. At the same time, Jamie murders his longtime ally, Kit, under the orders of Duchesne, and Lauren finally gets rid of Curtis, stabbing him and leaving him to die. What did you guys make of the last series of Top Boy? Next up, let's look at those hidden messages. Starting with Driss. We see Sully walking Driss to his fate, but we can also tell Sully doesn't want to do what he is about to do, as they can both relate to each other. They both have kids and also want to leave the gang life behind, and there is a ton of evidence which tells us that Sully isn't the same person he was before he went to prison, and one theory suggests that Sully didn't kill Driss at all. If you think back to the scene, Sully tells Jack to leave, and although we do hear the gunshot, we don't actually see it as the camera cuts off. As well as not seeing it, we don't hear the bullet enter a body. There is a distinct thud sound when a bullet enters a body, a sound which was conspicuous in its absence during the scene. Add to this the fact we also don't hear a body drop to the floor. All of this points to the fact that Sully has let Driss go. Another key piece of evidence pointing to the fact that Driss isn't actually dead is the police board at the end, which shows Driss as missing, not dead meaning they haven't found a body. This all points to Sully telling Driss to leave town. What do you guys think about all these hidden messages? Let us know below. Next up, we're discussing Sully's choice of bedtime story. Stay with us. You will probably remember Sully reading The Tiger Who Came to Tea to Tash before bed one night, and some fans have noticed a hidden meaning in the choice of story. The story tells the tale of a tiger who befriends a girl called Sophie and comes to her house for tea. However, the tiger doesn't just drink the tea, it eats all the food in the house and drains the water from the taps. So, in a bid to offer the tiger a loving home, Sophie and her mom go out and buy the tiger a ton of tiger food, but unfortunately, it never comes back. Direct parallels have been drawn between the tiger and Sully's behavior. If he wanted to, he could have had a loving relationship with his daughter and live as a real dad, but he chooses not to. Of course, he is way over his head with the gang life and there is just no way he can go back to normal life as much as he might like to be able to return home. Did you notice the correlation between the tiger and Sully? Let us know what you thought of it below. Next up, we're discussing how quickly xenophobia can turn deadly. This one isn't so much of a hidden message, more of a social commentary. When we see Sully setting up the drug house early on in the season, we can see a piece of graffiti outside the house which reads, Foreigners Out. Later on, written over it in yellow paint is the word scum. As horrible as this is, it's just words. But this quickly escalates when the brick covered in feces comes through the window. And this very very quickly turns to murder when the racists set the place on fire, trapping Jason on the top floor who succumbs to the smoke and flames. We're talking about the references to gentrification now. Stay tuned. As we see so often, old neighborhoods are knocked down and replaced with newer, shinier housing and neighborhoods. But of course, none of these new shops and houses are affordable to the old residents who live there, forcing them to relocate. And there are loads of examples of this in Top Boy, which shows the real issues going on in Hackney. There is evidence all over the place. I mean, Duchesne orders a cup of coffee so expensive you would expect him to be in central London, but of course he isn't. This shows us how gentrified the neighborhood has become. Jim also reveals to Sully and Jason that his dad was forced out of Hackney when prices got too high. And of course, we also see families moving out of their council houses, which are going to be replaced by multi-million pound development. The council also say they won't be able to rehouse everyone, a classic tale of gentrification. Pretty grim. Top Boy isn't 
actually about drugs at all. Of course, the show's theme is drugs, or food, as they are often referred to, but this isn't what the show is about whatsoever. Top Boy instead explores themes of loyalty and, of course, betrayal between both Duchesne and Sully, but not just those two. We also see Sully's character arc change from a ruthless criminal into a guilt-ridden, somewhat empathetic human being, which suggests to its watchers that some people can change, as much as their circumstances might not allow them to. Of course, the overarching theme of the show is power, which is represented by the drug trade, but this could be replaced by any commodity. The power theme has been central to civilization since day dot, and Top Boy is no different. This, of course, morphs into rivalry, as we see between Duchesne and Sully, who are at the start super close, but drift apart as they become bigger and bigger rivals. All of these themes are central to the show, which just so happens to be set around a backdrop of the drugs trade. What other themes have you guys noticed in Top Boy? Give us your thoughts below. So what can we expect from the third or fifth season? Let's see. Thankfully, Top Boy fans can chill. The show will officially be returning for the third, but sadly last season. Netflix officially announced the news a couple of weeks after the last season dropped, with their official Twitter account saying, every Top Boy has their time, and that time is coming, before then revealing that Top Boy will return for the third and final season. Filming starts this summer. And Kano also shared the great news, posting a video teaser, which was captioned with, that time is coming. Whilst we obviously have no word as of yet as to what the final season's plot will consist of, we can probably make an educated guess. The Scousers we saw in the last season could be back for more, as we saw most of them escape, apart from Curtis in the last episode. We can also probably expect Jamie's brothers to be looking for retribution when the new season rolls around, as they're probably not going to take their brother's murder lying down. Duchesne is also likely to be less than impressed that Sully has taken Jamie out, as he had big plans for him, and this storyline will more than likely be the biggest theme throughout the final season. What do you want to see covered in the final season? And finally, when can we expect to see the final season? Well, the last season dropped this March, and it has been suggested that filming will start this summer. If everything goes to plan, we can probably expect filming to run for around six months and then a couple of months post-production, which means the final series will probably, hopefully, drop around the same time next spring. When do you guys expect to see the final series? As always, thanks for joining us today, and remember to stop by next time for some more fun and games. And why not do us a solid by liking and sharing today's video with any top boys you might know of. Bye, guys.